Good evening, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66-Day Challenge 3.0. Today is day 47, so the third day in our sites uh, training that we've been doing here, and uh, we've been talking about agent websites. Today we're going to talk about, <laughs> excuse me, landing pages or uh, single-page sites. So we have the ability to come down to sites here, our second-to-last icon. Let's check on sites as we have done before. And today, instead of going into agent sites, we're gonna remain in the landing pages. So in order to create a landing page, or basically what a landing page is, it is a single page or a single place, if you will, uh, in the World Wide Web. And it's a place where you can direct clients or customers to learn a variety of things. So it might be something, um, it could be a sign-in form, which we're gonna do today for an open house, but could it be a sign-in form for an event? It could be a single page, advertising a listing, maybe it's advertising an event that you're doing. Um, really, the sky is the limit with regards to what you can do with these landing pages, and I'm going to show you how it's done today. So we're going to start by coming over to the top right-hand corner and clicking on Create a New Site. And this is not actually going to be on our agent site. It's going to be a standalone page that we create. So we're going to click the second option here, a standalone page, and then click on Create Page at the bottom right. <coughs> From there, we're gonna get into the builder or editor, if you will, of these landing pages. So on the right-hand side, you're gonna see nine different widgets that can be loaded in to these landing pages. And I would say, think of these as like, basically kind of Lego blocks that you're going to build within this blank canvas here to create your page. So you can um, bring in the widget. Once you have brought in the widget, they're gonna not have your information. They're gonna look a little weird. However, once they've all been brought in, then we're gonna go to configure widget. So I always like to start with either agent branding or branded header. Branded header is a little bit uh, kind of thinner, if you will. And so we'll start there. So I'm just clicking on this widget. I'm holding down my mouse button and I'm dragging it over. Once I let go, you can see it drops in the branded header here at the top of the page. So we had talked about this being an open house uh, sign-in sheet. That's kind of what I was thinking about making this for. So if you want to follow the same, you have a choice at this point. You can start putting information about the listing and uh, maybe market snapshots, some of your information, and then have your sign-in portion of this page at the very bottom. Or you can drop in the sign-in portion now and have that information below. I find that when I give the iPad or the Surface or whatever I'm using for guests to sign in at an open house, typically they need to know exactly what it is as soon as they see it. So that's why I like to have the lead form right at the top, right? So I'm gonna drop in the lead form here at the top. However, I do want more information about the property. So I'm going to drag in, here's listing, the widget for listing. I am gonna drag that in. And I'm gonna, if you see the green line, do you see that green line right here? If I were to drop it now, it would place this widget between this widget, which is the branded header, and this widget, which is the lead form. I don't want it there. I want it below the lead form. So as you see, if I move down the middle here, you see the green line, it's gonna to move to the bottom. I can then let go, and it's now going to place the listing information below the lead form. Now, obviously this isn't my listing and yet I'll be able to configure this shortly. All right, so I've got all of the listing information. You can keep going, right? You might wanna say, hey, uh, maybe I pull in a market snapshot about the actual listing. So let me drag this in. I wanna drop this at the bottom. And then I would always recommend you just have the legal footer at the very bottom of your page. All right, so you can come in and play with the rest of these widgets if you'd like. Um, however, those are the, the main few that I think are the best if you are doing an open house sign-in. Now, you may start getting into some things where you're doing specific maybe um, event sign-ins or buyer seminar or anything else along those lines. You do have some additional uh, kind of widget or not widgets, but layout opportunities here within content blocks and layout blocks. However, I have found that utilizing the widgets is the quickest and easiest way to build out these pages, all right? So now that I've dropped in these widgets, I need to configure them. So I'm gonna come over to Configure Widgets, this button at the very bottom right-hand corner, and I'm gonna click on it. 
it's going to give me the five widgets that I have selected. And you can see there are some that are checked white and some that are checked green. Essentially, I need to make sure that they are all checked green. Okay, so I'm going to click on branded header and it's going to say enter header text. And I have 30 characters you can see. Zero out of 30 have been used so far. So I can say welcome to 23106 Lodge Meadows. I just get that in under 30 characters. If I want to see what just that header looks like, I can come down and click on save and apply. And it'll refresh it. And all of a sudden now you can see that header applied. Okay, now all the rest of this material has been brought in from my marketing profile. So I've got my headshot, name, phone number, email, and team logo. If I wanted to adjust any of that, I certainly could. I usually like dashes in my phone numbers. That's just a personal preference. So I can click on save and apply. And now that's been added here on my phone number. You can see I'm in the branded header widget. That's one of the five widgets that are available for me to edit. So I'm gonna click on this right hand arrow and it's gonna take me into my second widget, which is the lead form. Now the form header task says interested, let's talk. That's not what I want that to say. Again, this is a sign in form for an open house. So I'm gonna have it say, please sign in, thank you. <clears throat> All right, and I can click on save and apply. And now you can see that it's clearly asked the guest to please sign in. Thank you. Right. So now I can go to the next widget, which is going to be the third widget. Let me click on this arrow one more time. And now I get into the listing. Now, 300 Hilltop View in Austin is not my listing, although I would love to sell it. If anybody knows who lives there, let me know. I can help. Otherwise, I'm going to go into browse listings. And I want to start searching for my property address. So we know that's 23106 Lodge Meadows. Once I type that in, I can click on search. Here is the listing right here. So I can click on select. And then I'm going to come down, right? And you're going to see here are all of the photos that it has pulled in from the MLS on this listing. Now it's going to automatically apply, right? And even tells you we've automatically applied the first image from the selected listing. So let me click on save and apply and see what that looks like. Okay, so if I scroll down a little bit, sure enough, there's the first listing photo. Okay, now if I want, I can come in and I can change that. And maybe I change it to this one and click on save and apply. Let's zoom in on the front door, All right? And so now you can see it's a different photo. So you can decide which photo you want to go with and which one you want to be kind of the featured photo of your page. But I do like that front photo, so I'm going to go ahead and click on save and apply there. Now the rest of this information is being pulled in from the MLS. So you can see there's the lead photo. It's got the information. Here's the bedrooms, bathrooms, your built and square foot. Here is the description that I wrote about the property being, being pulled in from our MLS. You'll see then there's a carousel that goes through all of the rest of the photos of the listing. And it's just kind of moving every three seconds or so. So that's kind of nice. It then dives into the additional information and features pulled in from the MLS as well. And then at the very bottom, you're gonna have a map showing where that listing is there in Katy. Okay, as I scroll further down, I'm gonna get into the next widget, which I have not yet configured. So it still says Barton Hills in Austin, and I need to change that. So I'm gonna click on this top right-hand arrow again to go to my fourth widget. That is the market snapshot, okay? So I'm just gonna put market info for Cinco Ranch. And I'm going to put in the zip code. Once I put in the zip code, you'll see that the neighborhood drop down then populates. And I can start looking through and find where my Cinco Ranch is. There's a lot of Cinco Ranches, so I just have to go through and find the one that applies to me. So you can see these are all neighborhoods that uh, next door has available for 77494. Okay, so I could do Cinco Ranch here, but my specific section is Cinco Ranch Greenway Village. So I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna click on save and apply. Now you'll see as we continue, <coughs> excuse me, continue to scroll down this landing page, 
we're going to get to, and here it is, here is Cinco Ranch Greenway Village. You can see the header has been changed, market info for Cinco Ranch. I could even put Greenway Village. And let's save that. That way it makes it a little more comprehensive as compared to just Cinco Ranch. I've got, or uh, all of Cinco Ranch, I've got Cinco Ranch Greenway Village. It's going to give me active listings, pending listings, average days on market, average list price, average price per square foot, and then average sold price as well. Okay, so that widget has been configured. I'm going to click on it one more time, go to my fifth widget. That's very the very bottom, which includes the legal footer. So it's got my DBA, it's got all of my social media, it has um, the address for my actual my actual um, office, and then it has the copyright and the ownership statement as well. So I'm gonna click on save and apply one last time. All right, so now that this page has been, all the widgets have been put in, I have edited all of the widgets, I'm gonna come up to the top. I want to change the name of this template to open house sign in Lodge Meadows. I'll make sure I spell that right. Okay. And now I can click on save landing page. It says, are you sure you want to save it as a draft? And I'll say yes. So now it has been saved. Okay. However, it has not been published yet. Right. So I could have just clicked on publish in that top right hand corner. If you don't do that and you want to go back in and make edits, you can. You could just click on edit and have, have the ability to come in and actually edit this page. But there are no edits that I want to make. I'm ready to roll. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready to claim my little slice of the World Wide Web, if you will. So I'm going to click on publish page. It's going to say, would you like to publish this as a landing page? page? It'll make it visible to others. And I would say, yes, I do. So now, as soon as I go back into command, you're gonna see I actually have a web address for this sign-in sheet for my listing on Lodge Meadows. So I have the ability to now pull up this site, right? So here is my URL for this landing page. I can actually click on that. And then as long as I have a connection at my open house, whether I'm using my hotspot or the client's um, Wi-Fi, whatever it may be, I could literally have this page out and ready right on a tablet or a surface or something similar and i could just let people know hey guys just need you to sign in real quick here's the tablet once you're done signing in feel free to scroll down for more information about the property and then here's the cool part right so this is tied to me let's say that i just gave this a guest to a guest and they said well my name is incredible hulk right and they give me their email address and their phone number great house they click on i'm not a robot and they can then click on send to sign in to my open house well here's the really cool part guys right so they just signed into my open house as incredible hulk when i come in i can now click on contacts right and i can actually sort by i think it's last visited will even show me the one that has come in most quickest maybe not um, so, but I do have the ability to, maybe it's last contacted. I know there's a way to get it. To sh there it is. Last contacted. Okay. When was the last time contacted? I could also filter by just leads, right? So if I wanted to show just my leads, um, right now it's showing all contacts. So, um, I could go in and filter, but here is incredible Hulk. This is what I wanted to show you. They signed in at my open house and immediately it's already created. Command has created a contact record for this person it shows their name their phone number their email address they put in a note it actually shows this note right and it shows preferred method of contact is email which already has a lot of information in here it's going to show you that the lead source it was a kw landing page so you may want to come in here and just edit that lead source but obviously they did come in through a KW landing page that you had created specifically for an open house. So just think about all the implications. Obviously, you could use this for sign-ins for all different types of events. You could create a custom landing page just specifically for a listing. You don't even need to have the lead form or you could put the lead form at the very bottom and yet have very specific information about the listing. And you could send that to a client. You could have that as the landing page for one of your Facebook ads. 
uh, the call to action link. You could put this in as the call to action link so they go directly to the page. So many opportunities and options available for individual landing pages. So that's it for today's challenge, guys. I hope you all had a fantastic day or having a good weekend. As always, I will look forward to speaking with you tomorrow. Thanks so much.